Hello, I'm Tim Smith, the pastor of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Fayetteville, Tennessee, and we're delighted to have you with us for this time of worship and study of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, our scripture reading comes from two places in scripture. One, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. And may God bless the reading of his holy word and incline its hearing to our hearts and our minds and its application to our lives this day. <clears throat> Back this past winter, when the weather was a lot different than it is today, as I said here on July the fourth week, filming this sermon, and it's supposed to be heat indexes between 105 and 110 degrees outside. This was back in January when we had the really cold weather and we had six inches of snow on the ground and temperatures were down below zero. My daughter was sitting at the house really bored out, and she wanted a new board game. And so she kept going on and on about she wanted this game called Life. And so eventually, after she worried me enough, I got in the vehicle and we went up to Walmart and bought it, came home, and of course, as soon as we got back home, we had to play it. And as we started playing it, it had really a game of life. It was a, that's actually what it was. It was you making different decisions that we had to make throughout our life and seeing who would win in the end. One of the first decisions one had to make was, are you going to college or to taking up a trade? Then what occupation are you going to be? And it would list how much money that you would make. Then the question was whether to get married, then whether to have children, then whether or not to... Um, buy a home, whether or not to buy a second home, what investments to make, and all these things. And eventually it worked around to you were able to decide whether you wanted to retire early or whether you wanted to keep working a few more years in order to try to make more money for your retirement. And in the end, whoever had the most money was who won. That's how that game worked. And I'm afraid that's how many people see life working today. They see life working by us seeing whoever can accumulate the most things will be the winner. Is that how we judge it? I know we live in a very materialistic society, but what about the stories we can tell? What about our experiences? What about the people we help? What about the people we make a difference in their life? What about our spiritual condition and how we feel physically, our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health? What about those? There was no place for them in the game, maybe because they aren't metrics that can be well valued or judged. Money is easy. We can add it up and put a hard number on it and be pretty content that that's fairly accurate. And so because it is such an easy metric to use, we often use it to judge not only other people's success and failure, but to judge and evaluate our own success and failure. I think it's important for us to realize that's not the way God values life. And that's not the way that as Christians we are to live. I know we live in a very materialistic society and one of the goals is to convince us 
that we really are no more than cogs in the economic machine, but we are human beings. We are physical creatures, we are spiritual creatures, and we need those needs met in our life. You know, we don't need to judge who we are or our success or failure based on our financial resources. Recently, I spoke to a man that had been a multimillionaire and had lost it all. He was broke, broke financially, but even more than broke financially, he was a broken man. He was broken mentally. He was broken spiritually. He was broken, just had lost everything and was just at his wit's end. I think it's easy for us to understand how that could happen. I've never had multi-millions of dollars, but I can imagine what it would be like to lose everything that I had and how painful and how awful that would be. But even if we did lose everything, we would still be a child of God. Jesus asked us, what good would it do to gain the whole world and lose one soul? What good would it do for us to gain all the money and all the resources in the world to be a trillionaire? and lose our soul in the process. Sadly, we see that happening all around us. We see people selling out their morals and their values for money. We see people choosing money over spending time with family. We see people choosing money over taking care of their bodies and taking care of their mental health. We see people, people choosing money over all these things when in essence our soul is what we need to be concerned about because our soul is what we're all about. I'm often asked, what is our soul? Well, our soul is really our core, our essence. It's really who Tim Smith is and who you are. You can't see a soul, really. You can't touch a soul, but it is still real and it has real needs and should be the very top of our priorities because there's more to Tim Smith than this physical body. <laughs> I sure hope there's more to me than this physical body because these physical bodies have aches and pains and break down and have all sorts of problems. So I sure hope there's more to me than this physical body. And there is, there is the spiritual body we are more than a bank account. We're more than what we look like. We're more than the house we live in. And I'm reminded of the song, What Would You Give in Exchange for Your Soul? In the game of life that I played with my daughter, it had no concern for spirituality, religion of any kind, and certainly not of Jesus Christ. Yet those are the things that are the most important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our spiritual things are what are most important because we are spiritual creatures in a physical body. And you may say, well, preacher, now hold on there. I know I'm a physical creature because I have a physical body. I live in a physical world. I see physical things. I touch physical things. What do you mean that I'm not a physical creature? Well, we are physical creatures for a time while we're on this earth, but we are spiritual creatures from now on because the soul lives eternally. One day, this physical body will die. One day, this physical world will come to an end, but our souls will live on forever, and we need to be sure we are meeting the needs of our souls. We all have spiritual needs. That's why Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, and whoever eats of me will never be hungry. And I bring the living water, and whoever drinks of it will never be thirsty. The point Jesus is making is we need our souls nourished, and that nourishment comes from Jesus Christ. He is the answer, my friends. Today, there are people searching for meaning in life, seeking direction in life, trying to find some way to make heads or tails out of the world that we're living in. 
Well, there's no way we can understand it without seeing everything through the prism of Jesus because he offers us forgiveness, he offers us newness of life, he offers us reconciliation with God, he gives us peace that is beyond all understanding, and he provides us with meaning and purpose in life. That is one of the things that I am often asked by people, especially those that are non-believers, what is life really about? What is its purpose? The purpose of life is to glorify God and to help other people. We are to live as Christ lived, caring for others. We are to live a selfless life, not a selfish life. And everything we see in this age tells us we need to live for ourselves, we need to be greedy, we need to be envious, we need to be selfish. But that's not what Jesus teaches. Instead, he teaches that we should be selfless and we should be willing to give up anything that we have for other people. That is not just something that he taught, but something that he lived. Notice that Jesus, the most influential person that has ever lived in the history of the world, and that's so whether you believe in him, don't believe in him, like him or don't like him, He's the most influential person that has ever lived on the earth. And he lived a short life with a ministry of only three years. But during that time, what did he accumulate? What would we say was the value of his life? What did he have? He had no home. He had no house to liquidate, no bank account, no estate to be settled. The only possession that we are told that he had as he went to the crucifixion were the clothes on his very back. Imagine, the most influential person, the most important person that has ever lived in human history, if we were to value their life, it would be only by the clothes on their back. It would sound... For many of us, if we were to look at the life of Jesus by the way we judge our own success and failure in life and the way we judge others' success and failure in life, we would say he was a failure. But obviously, Jesus was no failure. He transformed the world and changed it. And hopefully, he has changed and transformed your life. See, Jesus had been tempted with all these things, Immediately after Jesus' baptism, he was taken out into the wilderness, and there Satan tempted him with money and power and riches and all the things this age has to offer, and he resisted those temptations. Satan tempts us in the same way, but the difference is we often fall for those temptations. If you've not come to know Jesus and made him the Lord of your life, today is the day. Because we only get one life to live. We only get one crack at it in this age. And we need to be sure we are doing it right. Because this one opportunity we have is all we have. And we want to make the best of it, the most of it. And we cannot make the most of life and live the best life we could live without Jesus Christ. Now you may be sitting there saying, you know, I've wasted a lot of time. I should have been a Christian years ago. Or I've spent all this time pursuing physical things and I neglected my spiritual needs. Well, friend, it is never too late. I know that we cannot get that time back, but just because we have messed up one portion of our life does not mean we have to mess up our entire life. Just because we lived in darkness for a time doesn't mean we are doomed to stay in darkness because all we have to do is come to know Jesus to be able to live and get the most out of life spiritually and also physically. So don't delay. Jesus offers this new life and don't live another day in misery. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you sent your son Jesus to this world that we might have new life. 
that we might find meaning and purpose in this age and might have everlasting and eternal life in the age to come. Help us to focus on spiritual things and help us to resist the temptations of Satan and of this age. Help us to look at what is really important, and that is the things of you. We ask that you would forgive us for the times that we have lost our focus and the times that we have not served you as we should. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Once again, I'm Tim Smith. I'm the pastor here at the Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Fayetteville, Tennessee. We're located at 1015 Lewisburg Highway, and we have two worship services each Sunday. We have our casual worship at 830 in the Fellowship Hall, and then we have our traditional worship in the sanctuary at 1030. May God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful week.